Mister, look at your girl. I can see it in her eyes. She loves it. Welcome to Canonical Chronicle episode 7,502. Let's get into it. Every single time I watch a webmaster hangout, I'm like... The reason being is we still get people asking questions like, are multiple H1s on a page bad? I don't know how John sits there and answers all those questions, but God love him, he has the patience of a saint. On Webmaster Hangouts, John is kind of like... <laughs> so essentially, all you need to know is multiple H1s on a page are fine, but if you can get around it, just use one because it's obviously a bit of a ranking signal for Google, otherwise they wouldn't mention it in their documentation. Have you done any migrations recently? And have you had your traffic do this? Well, the good news is that we have one more tool in our arsenal to guard against it. So when the old search console went away, so did the ability to do the change of address. The tool essentially allowed you to indicate that you are moving to a new site or subdomain. Well, very good news, the tool is now back within the new version of Search Console, so when you're doing your next migration, you can tell Google from what domain it's starting and what domain it's going to. Oh boys, I'm back! So with all the new development frameworks on the web now available, it looks like the Google user agent is kind of like... You like popsicles? Well, sure. And you need to come on down to the cellar. I got a whole freezer full of popsicles. So Google currently uses a Chrome-based web browser to render web pages. So to reflect the new updates, they're going to update user strings to better reflect the browser version and update it more regularly, essentially creating an evergreen Googlebot crawler. Now for most of you, this isn't really going to matter, but if you pre-render web pages or use a technology that sniffs for the user agent to serve a particular experience, this may break your indexing. So Google are recommending that you use feature detection instead of user agent sniffing. So if you can do that, then just simply search for Googlebot inside the user string. If you don't, some of the errors you're going to get may include your site mistaking Googlebot for an ad blocker and not indexing any content, or even worse, just not showing anything at all, a completely blank page. For more information, go over to the Googlebot site so you can see how to implement all these updates. Are you a bit of a video buff? Are you constantly taking like selfies and vlogging? Like... All right guys, uh, crossing the street here at Paseo del Saber. Uh, these guys are for sure virgins. Well, good news, you can now see video performance inside Search Console performance reports. Now, you need video object structured data markup on the page for it to show. Uh, quick question, Ron, do we have a video markup on our Canonical Chronicle videos? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the answer is no, we don't. So at type A, we're gonna put them on and we'll let you know how it goes. But the great thing about this is you're now gonna see your video traffic segmented away from normal web traffic, which means that when it comes to optimizing keywords and videos, there's one more thing in your arsenal that's gonna help you perform better when it comes to video. That's everything for this week's Canonical Chronicle. We hope you've enjoyed it. If so, please do leave a comment down below and let me know how you're going to be using all these tips and tricks. And please do follow us on social. And until next time, we will see you later.